Good afternoon, everybody. Lovely to see you here um, on it's nearly a sunny day in August. I hope you have got some sun. Um, it's great to see so many of you booked in today. Um, I'm Polly Barnfield and I'm here with my colleague Sarah Bassett. Um, hello, Sarah. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, I too have a little bit of sunshine in Warwickshire today, which is very refreshing. Uh, great to see so many of you flooding in. Had a near record um, um, booking today, which we did have to think we, we might be a little bit lonely this morning, because this afternoon, because it uh, being August, but um, everybody's hard at it to, still. I think the weather's keeping us our desks. So we'll have a moment of chat. Um, I think the we, we've disabled the chat because it's much easier to manage through Q&A. Um, so if you've got any Q&A, please do drop them into there um, as we go through the session. Um, Sarah's done an amazing piece of research today, so we're going to dual control this. Um, but as we go through, if you've got any questions, please do drop them in the Q&A um, and we look forward to answering them. Um, I know Sarah's had a slight family a bit of excitement this morning, to, so if, if required, she may have to go offline. Um, um, but um, um, hopefully we should be right, Sarah. Is that right? We'll be fine. We'll okay. be fine. I hope everything's OK. Thank you. Um, well, without further ado, because I think we've got uh, record attendance here don't want to keep you all hanging about um thank you so much um we're here on behalf of the high street task force um we're maybe and we are here to talk to you about understanding place sentiment um, i'm polly Barnfield. i'm the founder and ceo of maybe and um you've met sarah who's with me as well today um sarah is our head of growth at maybe and spends her life talking to local authorities um, and helping you deliver um, local business support but you also have a number of local authorities that um, use maybe to deliver social media, their own social media. And we've done a really great piece of work this morning um, um, around looking at how local authorities are performing on social media. So we're going to explore how all of you are leveraging the power of social media to unite communities, drive economic growth and foster a sense of pride in our local areas. And we've got some fantastic case studies. Um, I had a glimpse of them earlier on. They're really, really great. So well done. Um, and uh, buckle up to see some real um, um, uh, inspiration. That's the word I was looking for, sorry. Around engaging with residents and businesses through social media to, to generate that positivity across communities. And we're going to highlight the distinctive attractions of regions um, and how that can be used to attract investment um, and tourism. And we're going to showcase and support local businesses, community um, uh, and enterprises to drive economic growth. Um, we've also got a live demo for you of AI. Um, it's it's on, in the press frequently now, and often it's a little bit hard to give it context. But I think we've got a really compelling use case for you at the end of the webinar around how it can help you um, not only create content, but actually deal with all of those responses around chewing gum, bins, parking. And those things that are really hard for your teams to continually answer. Um, you know, how can you all be experts in council tax um, and been emptying? Um, and there's something really, really exciting that we have discovered in relation to AI, local authorities, and social media. So, without further ado, um, we will crack on. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, the um, this is eye watering. We've updated this slide actually because it previously used to say um 3.8 billion but in 2023 an estimated 4.9 billion will use social media across the world um and by 2027 it's expected to reach 5.85 billion the way we communicate has fundamentally changed i saw a really interesting article the other day that said um 15 years ago there are a thousand publishers in the world and now there are 4.9 billion publishers in the world and it changes, it's changing the world in more ways than we can possibly imagine. So today we're really gonna focus on the impact that that has on local authorities. Um, we listen to what, what the data from 3.9 million businesses across the UK, and rather frighteningly, it reveals that only 19% of businesses have an active social media account. Um, only 9% of businesses post at the weekend at the point when consumers have more and more time. And only 25% of businesses are spending more than five hours a week managing their social media, which is less than the average of the time the average person spends. So a large part of our time, we look at 
how our businesses are performing social media and help them to get better. Um, today's focus, just to be clear, is about how particular local authorities do it. But this is looking at across regions across the UK, how many businesses are active on social media. And these are the best performing ones. We've got Westminster, Central London. And you can see here that you've got, let's say, the column, second column in is 32, 31% of businesses have a social media account. But then if you look at active on social, only 11% um, across this screen, 11%, 13%, 19% are active on social media. So the message is that the channel where consumers are spending most time, the majority of local businesses are not yet fully active in. And that does have an impact on um, places' ability to pull people in and off the internet, actually. <laughs> not in our world, there's no difference between digital and physical. It is one blurred experience. And the more prolific you can be in your digital communication, the greater impact it has on physical place. We are not covering this case study today, but something we've mentioned in the past is some of the work we've done across the UK with local authorities. We've been able to measure the impact of increasing social media and how it impacts footfall. Now, interestingly, that's one of the things that's baked into your High Street Task Force dashboard. Um, so if you haven't yet accessed it, um, please do let us know. Um, we can help you make sure that that make, make that happen. But equally, you can access most of this data through maybe itself um, and do a whole lot more about actually improving it. Um, everybody that um, everybody through our work with Hampshire Task Force, we provide everybody access to maybe as well. So everything we're talking about today, you've all got the right to access. So please do get in touch so you get access to it. On the High Street Task Force dashboard, you have digital sentiment, which lets you see what people are talking about in your area. All of this data we provide to them. You've got this idea of what digital participation. So you see here the orange is national organisations, the green is local, and you can see at a glance what is the break between how much local organisations are talking versus national. The reason that's important is because national organisations always talk about the website, they never talk about locality, whereas your local businesses, ones that are in your, your town or, or city, will talk about your locality and they're the ones that bring footfall into your high streets. Um, digital activity, we look at digital activity against your footfall. So both on the High Street Task Force dashboard and within maybe itself, you can map social activity against uh, footfall. And we know that in areas where you get businesses to talk more about the place, the footfall goes up. Um, a great, great case study in Herefordshire where we can demonstrate an increase in over 15% in footfall from participating businesses who just posted more and reached out to the local community to share what they do and you get more people coming to the front door. You can also within High Street Task Force dashboard break down your um, traffic between Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or should I say X? That's a little interesting, that's, that's another whole story for you, but hey, hey, where you can look at what, um, what, what are the most um, engaged channels. This is indicative, please don't take that to mean that Twitter's the most. Um, I always mean to change this graph. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, any questions, please do drop them in the channel, um, in Q&A, and we will answer them. Um, I get nervous when there's many people on the call, but please answer, ask questions in the Q&A. Um, Sarah will have Q&A open and will flag them to me as we go through. Um, so, well, so what, you know, social media, so what? Well, so what is, it's where conversations take place. It's where reputations flourish or wither, um, as we see with many politicians. Um, and it's often where emergencies and crises hit first. So being able to manage social media, so it's not just about being able to send the right message out, it's being able to manage the incoming um, aspects from it. Um, Sarah and I actually had a very interesting meeting um, the other day we went to Newcastle to a university there um, and they were talking about how actually at clearing the volume of direct messages and incoming traffic that we have they have from students this time of year is incredibly hard to manage but actually it's the most important part of their organization because it's at that moment when students are making a decision about where they're going to go and which university they're going to go to actually they make their money and I guarantee you that within each of your authorities, there'll be some, there'll be something somewhere which is probably hidden and probably where not everybody can see, there'll be ebbs and flows in where you have an influx of communication and the quality of that response will have a big impact on how your citizens perceive the local authority. Um, and it's, it's interesting how we all talk about what, what are you posting, but actually often it's the quality of the response that matters. Spoiler alert, we're gonna talk much more about that at the end of the session, so don't go away. Um, big messages, the way we've communicated has changed. 
98% of local authorities are using some form of social media, 10 out of 10. Um, what we look at in a moment is how well you're using it, what good looks like and how, how, and how you can take inspiration from those doing well. For those, anybody that's saying, well, is it, does it really matter? Um, the answer is a resounding yes. 82% of consumers are now engaging social media for more than one, uh, one hour a day. I think there's a stat which is 84% 80, of consumers now say they go to social media first to decide whether something's good, what they're gonna do, is their source of inspiration. So you know, as an authority and as an area, the quality of your digital output has a direct relationship to how people perceive you and uh, both in an authority sense and also as, as in what does your place look like? Do I want to go there to invest, to shop, to do whatever it is? Social media will have is a very, it's very hidden, but it's very impactful in how it influences people's outcomes. It was really interesting when I was sort of looking back uh, through, through various kind of data points this morning um, about, you know, the change in the way that local authorities um, are now using social media as a communication channel. It was very much, you know, pre-COVID especially, I think COVID was a, a real big game changer for a, a different approach and opening local authority communications up. But it was typically a, a sort of um, a one-way channel. It was a tool that local authorities used to disseminate information, um, and, you know, it, it was informing the businesses or their stakeholders or their, you know, it was just a broadcasting channel, if you like. And now, you know, I mean, we've obviously got access to the data. Well, I say we've obviously, we do have access to the data uh, in our platform for every single local uh, authority across the UK. Um, and we can see how they're using social media um, to engage various different audiences and 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 communicate different messaging um, and how that really is now starting to become very much a two-way communication because consumers the way they're behaving has changed and they expect a two-way communication it's expected of a local authority to respond and in fact um, having had various conversations uh, recently with local authorities around the need for a response and engagement it's that a it's an amazing way to engage with younger like Polly was just saying uh the younger audience but that actually younger and mid-age audiences will go to social media their local council's social media to find out about the bin collections or the or to complain about the lack of or to celebrate something or share something in their community they do it through social media they're not phoning the call center the council's number to speak to anyone they're engaging straight away and expect to be engaged back and it's really interesting looking at the patterns so this, thank you oh, that's okay and um, so one of the things that we've been really working on, um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see the, sh the, the, the research that Sarah's Sarah going to show us in a moment, is this is a snapshot from one of our public groups that are about to um, launch. And Sarah, we've, we've had 50 public groups that we've created, local authority being one of them. But we've also done butchers, florists, farm shops, accountants, lawyers, and we've created these groups of the top 200 um organizations in each sector group um, and we're launching them on the maybe platform so you can literally dive in and say what does good look like um, and what sarah's got here and she's going to talk you through in a moment is the best performing local authorities in the uk drum roll please uh, i think what's really fascinating from my perspective if i can just talk to this case and then sarah and hand you hand, hand you over to sarah is what you've got is the local authority um, and we've got the number of followers, the number of posts, the number of engagements, the posts per day, the engagements per post and the engagements per day. Now we rank this data by engagements per day. Now what's really interesting here is if you suddenly, if you cast your eye left, you can see engagements per day versus posts per day. So Sunderland City, hats off to you, best performing um, local authority in terms of engagement in the date in the date range we've picked 
but you've got 13 posts and, two, and, two, and 222 engagements per day versus somewhere like Glasgow where you've got one post per, uh, per day and 121. What Sarah is going to reveal to you and sit tight and buckle up because this is the exciting bit is what's the difference in the engagement and before anybody says well is it good or is it bad because actually is that one post that everybody got angry about or one post that everybody's excited about that those are all the subtle nuances of of maybe. Now within um, the maybe platform you can also see the best post um, you can see at a glance with its Instagram or Facebook. This for me is interesting as well. I'd be fascinated to know, Sarah, and I'm sure you'll cover this, whether in the main local authorities are staying off Instagram, because normally with other sectors, Instagram is always the channel where the best post is. And I'm fascinated to see that it's Facebook. Um, but equally, I think, and I'm sure you'll show this, show this to us, you can go and look at the calendar. You can go and look at what each local authority is posting. You can show us that, Sarah. I am, yes. <laughs> okay, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, yeah, I've, now, as, as Polly's just explained, um, this, this particular data set is uh, ranked by number of average number of engagements per day, which suddenly are getting great in, get engagements. So I'm going to show you some content in a second. Um, but, you know, where is the effort? As, as, as in looking at Plymouth, for example, four posts a day, again, 125 engagements. But this data changes all the time because as Polly says, it really does depend on the type of content that you're putting out there and the type of content that you're asking people to engage with. So this goes up and down. This is, this is not a static Sunderland City Council are the best. They're just the best this week. And I'm going to show you why. So um, within the platform, when you sort of go into all of these insights, um, you can just literally click in and see exactly what the posts were that drove all those wonderful engagements. I thought it was really interesting looking at the mix of content that Sunderland um, have been putting out in the last week, because there's so many different conversations that a local authority has to have with its audiences. Um, very conscious, obviously, and there's lots of events going on and, and, and it's the school holidays. So they're promoting lots of activity around the school holidays. But there's talk in there about the recycling. Um, there's talk in there about um, help if you're struggling to manage your credit. You know, it's all helpful, interesting content, but it's, it's broken up and it's getting really, really good, strong engagement. Um, and um, I like the language and the tone of voice. It feels very approachable. Um, they've used video in some. It's just um, this is this is obviously resonating with their communities. Their communities are engaging in their content. Then I, I thought, well, I'll have a look at Plymouth because we just talked about that now. So, you know, there are four posts effectively that, that Plymouth have done. I thought this was an interesting as well. They too were talking about all the, you know, the wonderful things that are going on because it's the holidays. And, and obviously Plymouth, you've got um, you've got the tourist element as well. But they're engaging with Love Parks Week. Um, interestingly, I was talking to... Um, you know, that there are all these different hashtag conversations out there that we can all go and engage with. And we all wander around going, Gordon Bennett, you know, what 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 can I post this week? What can I say that's relevant? Um, and they've picked up this conversation and talked about what's going on in their local parks. And an interesting, I was uh, on, talking to a lovely lady who does the social media for the Lawn Tennis Association in Kent, and they're really wanting to promote... Um, the tennis facilities in parks around Kent and and get young people and uh, also kind of disadvantaged communities going to the parks to engage in tennis as a sport. Um, so they're engaging in those days. It could be very powerful to do so. They've all also come up with perhaps some more serious content around um, the former Lord Mayor uh, and she's back in Cabinet. Um, and talked about, you know, that she's going to focus on uh, the living crisis for residents and tackling health inequalities. So this is all information we're all interested in hearing, but it's getting great engagement. I mean, the first of the fit and fed sessions, whatever that is, in Central Park, uh, with all these lovely emojis in it and feeling really approachable. Look at that. 70 likes, 35 comments, 78 shares. I mean, that's really resonated hasn't it i think sarah actually what's, what's really interesting for that here so plymouth are, are, are posting less content but what they're getting with their content is 
that 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 social aspect in that with 35 comments that means that one post has now proliferated through 35 people's other feeds you've reached their network so Plymouth are finding the content that's really resonating with their local community um, and so they're doing less but getting more yeah yeah I, this week this week, this week this week this week and it's always a combination of what's the story you've got to tell and how well do you deliver it? So your social media team uh, can't can't do this without something great to talk about. Um, so it really, social media is is it has to be is the ultimate collaboration because you've got to have something to talk about to make great content. Yeah, agreed. Um, well, we're very good at that. Um, you oh, bashful, can... bashful, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, um, every month we release all of those fabulous conversations that you can look at and be inspired by to, you know, to shape your social media conversation um, as you create your local campaigns. And I just had to share this because, I mean, just look at that cat. Is it a cat? I thought it was a teddy bear. It's amazing. I don't, I don't know. If, is it, I think it is a real cat. But anyway, we have this is free to download. You all have access to this. This is every inspiring day throughout August. And it's really interesting. Um, and we, we, we do one of these blogs, if you like, or a piece of advice every month. And there's, there's always interesting ideas around it and some case studies and so on. Um, so I just thought we'd mention it's been so popular actually Sarah isn't it we started at the beginning of this year and what we've now done is taken all of the dates that you that exist um, across the UK for whether it's hug your cat day or pick wildflowers day or scrape sugar or national chewing gum day whatever it is they're now all baked within the maybe platform so um, what Sarah's going to show you in a moment is actually how you can um, automatically generate content that, that aligns with your mission um, and the, 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 the relevant days out there. So sit tight and you can see that in a moment. We're really excited by that. So really, we're really pleased the way that AI is helping us do that. Absolutely, yes, I will absolutely show you that. And I just, you know, in, engaging in specific national days is very useful and it really helps to be, make content relevant and inspiring but I, I love this as well um so this is Soundwell uh, Metropolitan Borough Council um and they yes they talk about the Digmouth Dining Club anyone who's based in the Midlands will know how fabulous the Digmouth Dining Club is so that is always going to uh, drive lots of engagement and it has there's 51 comments they're talking about it um they're they're building up the excitement they're telling everybody where it is it's free entry you know they're really they've really spaced out that invitation really beautifully but what I loved and I always find so frustrating actually is that there's a lot of national content that all of us as social media managers, whether for local authorities or anybody else, but particularly, I think, communities, sport is just so big on people's agenda. And they have localised the lionesses because actually Georgia Stanway is from Sunwell. So they've taken this national content and they've localized it and they've promoted it and they've engaged in that conversation, which will resonate so brilliantly with their young audiences. And there's a series of these posts. This is the, the first one, but they're, they're, they're talking about, you know, joining local football, girls, football training clubs and so on. I just think it's a great engagement piece, really good use of a bigger event, something that you can localise. What is the big conversation that you can localise? Um, because actually there's great power in that. I just thought this is a really good example. A 10 out of 10 for that. Really, really good. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Go Lionesses, that's all I can say. Now this one, um, I tried to get the link to work so I could play it to you. It looks like a really quite a miserable picture. Um and I, I just sort of came this I'm just showing you a couple of examples of content that I thought was particularly interesting. Um, Newcastle City Council. Now, this is, I just think, an epic way to turn a negative situation into a positive. So what they've done is they've said, good news. 
the central motorway northbound has fully reopened ahead of schedule boom following the dem demolition of a fire damaged building in Carlisle Square. Now, that what they've done is they've done a dash cam recording of the journey through Central Motorway. So this is actually a video of them driving through the reopened route. And look at this. And just look at the engagement. 253 likes, 75 comments, all really nice and positive. 35,000 views. Now, I will imagine that the lead up to this content with <laughs> it actually being closed northbound was a pretty negative set of conversation. But look at that. I was just I mean, brilliant. Um, and I urge you to go and have a look at the actual video itself. It's really good. Uh, it's super quick. And it's literally just a, a sped up dash cam recording. And it's, it's very clever. Really liked it. Um, and you even get a, a, a sneak preview of the, the demolition as well. So anyway, I just thought that was brilliant. Um, and why is, why is my not moving ahead? Why am I not going? Oh, here we go. Is it doing it now? Oh, it's clicked on the link. There you go. It's actually done it. Ta-da! Don't you love it when, don't you love it when the plan comes off? Well, I know. I sort of, yes. I wasn't even going to go there, but look. Just a bit, just such a lovely, simple idea, but works so well. Works so well. Video is the winner. And as long as they weren't holding the camera, obviously, that was a dash cam. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it, it feels fairly steady. It certainly wasn't um, me with my shaky hands, but I, they branded it. Anyway, let's go back to webinar. Here we go. Now, this one I just thought was, I just had to just think, I just thought it was wonderful. And it made me smile. And it has had 74 comments and 106 shares. And it's it's about the goats, uh, which are making their long-awaited return to the slopes at Cromer. Now, that's the local authority, you know, sharing something really that they it is quite amusing. It's it's not political. It's not about any of their services. It's just sharing a celebratory thing that, again, they've done it. They use Goat Pro technology, which I thought was very amusing, sort of Goat uh, GoPro. Um, but they're they're talking about them, you know, reuniting the lonely goat who stays, who, who didn't leave in the first place, and they're coming back for their summer job to cut down the grass and whatnot by the beach, and a lovely picture. But I just, I, th I just had to end on that. I thought that was really nice content, um, you know, for a local authority. It's so exciting to see the boundaries between, you know, that that whole tonality that is so difficult to manage around, you know, reputation and, um, you know, social media policy and communications policy and what you can and can't say and. But as local authorities, you know, there's that responsibility to build that community and really can have a massive impact in Pride in Place. I mean, that is Pride in Place in a post, in my opinion. Just, just what I was going to say, Sarah, it's, it, that's Pride in the Place on, on a hill in, in, in Chrome. It doesn't, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah, really, really good. And, and the, everything, the humour, the goat pro, the just, yeah, that's 10 out of 10. Really, really good. Well found, found. And I hope I hope everybody on the call can appreciate how sometimes it's just about the value you deliver to your audience that engages them, that, that creates that pride in place. Um, so, yeah, um, great find, Sarah. Thank you. And remember... I've got a few, got a few questions, actually, in the Q&A. Um, um, there's a question here from Stephen saying, um, you know, do, is there, is there a... Um, uh, you know, does it, do, does, do, does, is there a theme that matters most? I think, Stephen, that the, the honest answer is it's be authentic, um, showcase your place in a way that you believe your community want to engage with it, which is, I think, really at the heart of what Sarah, Sarah has shown here. This is all content that, as somebody that's living in the area, you can relate to it, and maybe you don't see them, you like that. Um, you know, the Lionesses story, it, it's, it's all about celebrating the people and the community um, and the place that you're in, um, doing this in a way that is finger-stopping and engaging. Um, is absolutely key and that's what that's what creates pride in place it doesn't have to be 
high production. It doesn't need to be a professional video. It's about telling a story and capturing the moment that really, really matters. Oh, I've got another question come in. Hang on a second. Um, uh, thank you. Somebody, somebody said great examples of place marketing. Absolutely. So Sarah, 10 out of 10 for that. Brilliant job. Um, I think it, it, you know, the key word I love about this and what you pulled out is authenticity. And it's and it's and you know, people vote with their thumbs and their likes and their comments. And that's what you can see here. It's the authentic content that's really resonating. It's often not the high production stuff that wins. Um, and um, we'll continue to share. We'd love to hear people's thoughts, but please do make sure you make use of your maybe account and um, you need any help with it, grab Sarah, because you've all got access to this as well, which is our content calendar. It means you can look at what you're scheduling, the little red blocks are World Engagement Day, Bike Week, for example. And I think Sarah, you're now going to give us a live example of how when you when you when you get, oh actually, I'm interested in one of those things, you click it. And it drafts the post for you using AI based upon. Oh, don't sorry, it. sorry, I get so excited. Off you go, Sarah. I'll be quiet. Sorry, 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 sorry. Ask more questions, and I can interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Do ask lots of questions. You're more than welcome. Yeah. So this is um, this is the maybe dashboard that you all have access to, and this is actually our content scheduling uh, calendar, uh, and this is ours. But it just gives you an idea of uh, how you can view all the social media content that's scheduled or that's coming from the past, the present. Uh, you can look at your calendar. You can compare to somebody else's calendar. We'll have a look at that. But there's, there's a whole load of things. But where does this content come from? And how do we create as local authorities that do have a responsibility to communicate within certain boundaries and certain guidelines? And we have sometimes small teams one person that has that responsibility sometimes larger teams but how do you get a consistent tone of voice in what you're talking about because actually you know we've we've picked up the goat story which is amusing but actually i'm sure most of their content needs to be really quite serious i mean you know boring to harp on about covid but crikey i mean did comms teams face a challenge through that I just hats off to every single one of you um, um and there were so many different approaches to it uh, Doncaster if you haven't looked at theirs there's a blog actually on our website about Doncaster's use of, of social media during Covid but um yeah do go and have a look but I'm going to show you how we can help you deliver consistent content whether light-hearted or serious across all of your social media channels Oop. am I going into no I'm not going into that one yes okay I'm going to go to this screen first and one of the things we're going to I'm going to show you live it's always a bit scary um is how to create great content now maybe uh, has just launched maybe AI, which is what we're going to be talking about in the main. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have dabbled with chat GPT, for example. Um, it's really interesting. It's really helpful. Help to write content, uh, help you write blogs, help you, you know, curate press releases. Whatever it is that you need to do as part of your communications day, there's lots of really useful tools in there. But the answers it provides it doesn't know who you are, what your organisation does, what your tone of voice should be, whether you should be amusing or professional or um, friendly. It doesn't know what type of content you normally generate. It doesn't personalise it in any way, shape or form. So what we've done is we've taken the technology and we put all our fabulous data. So we would talk about data sets and that we follow 3.9 million businesses and, and we've got the data for all of the social media content across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, yada, yada, yada. And we have fed this into our AI. So our AI is basically looking at all of the content that people are generating across any sector you can think of and start to learn what works, what's getting the engagement, what are people interested in? And then we've basically built in a whole load of prompts that you can use to help you write content. 
But because of the way that we've taught our AI, it will write you content in your tone of voice that's relevant to you and to your place. You can even direct our AI at different URLs, feed it data that you can create content about, all sorts of different things. So I'm going to go off into the actual platform um, and I'm going to share with you um, Caffili County Borough Council's account. So while I just fiddle about with my screen and find the right, right place to go to, Polly, I'll just let you take over and, and do the mood, the mood music thing. No problem. Um, so, so just to recap on what Sarah's saying is that um, ChatGPT is amazing, but the challenge with it is it doesn't know how to be you. Um, and what we're finding is that by being able to provide um, businesses with access to AI that inherently knows how to be them, it has many more applications. Um, what Sarah's going to show you right now is Kafili um, Borough Council. Um, um, and maybe some others, um, and look at how they can actually use the Mobi platform to create content and respond to content. And just to be really clear here, this is not designed to take anybody's job. It's designed to enable anybody to be the best version of themselves. One of the things that we've, we've learned massively is that there's a lot of repetition when answering comments and there's a lot of work when creating content. And our AI is designed to help make that Make, make that process much more efficient so that your teams can serve your communities much better. Um, Sarah, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the movie you said, it was beautifully done. Um, okay, so uh, maybe here's the platform, here's our dashboard, does lots of amazing things and gives you lots of amazing information about how your social media is performing for you as the council, what's your best post in the last week, uh, you know, how many followers have you got, how many engagements are you getting, what, what, what are people saying about you, all sorts of lovely reporting information. But we want to talk to you about the, the content delivery and actually how you use the platform to engage. So um, before um, recording this, I actually um, use the AI to, to do a few things. So sometimes when I'm streaming, it can be a bit slow. So I've, I've got some, uh, what do you call it? It was, it was very, um, here's what I made earlier. Um, can't remember what the program was called now. They always had sticky back plastic, Blue Peter. There you go. In true Blue Peter fashion, here's what I did earlier. So I clicked into what should we post this week? I'm Caffili Council. Just going to move myself out of the way. Here we go. What should we post this week? So what it's done, it's created, the AI has created this amazing prompt with a lot more detail than you would necessarily need, but it actually delivers what you're asking. So here we go. Within 10 seconds, I've got in the Instagram post, it's gone back through Philly's uh, county's uh, content and is picking up subjects that they already know about. So they're creating content that is relevant in their tone of voice. It's even delivering emojis that it's used to the council using. Um, calling all Caffili residents, join us on August the 1st, uh, Caffili Workman's Hall for a consultation evening on the 2035 project. Great, a really nice engagement piece. And it's included hashtags, all at the press of a button. Now we were talking obviously about these, um, in the, these, these, uh, national days, if you like. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go into the content calendar. Which takes a second to move through. Because you can so use... Well, Sarah's waiting for that to load. Just to be clear, that what she's showing you in the chat here it literally happens in seconds. It's just because we're streaming, we've pre-done it. You can ask, what should I post today? We might just, we'll, we'll try, on, try on for real. We create the content and then you can create a post in your calendar. Um, Sarah, over to you. Thank you. Um, so this is what their, their content calendar looks like. And we've got we've got content scheduled for the week ahead. Uh, you can go back and look at other days, but we've asked, basically said, I'm just gonna open that back up again. We've asked that, and then I've said. Please create a selection of Instagram posts to promote Cycle to Work Day. 
um, and promoting the impact cycling has on the environment. Because I kind of, local authority, I want to know, but yeah, why is it relevant to us? Um, we need to create some content that's engaging and aligns with our um, our policies around, you know, net zero or whatever it is. And you could be as specific as that with the AI. Um, but I, I sort of went for something lighter. So happy cycle to work day. Let's pedal towards a green future together. Um, this is literally just generated. Um, Instagram post too. Did you know cycling is not only good for your health, but also for the environment? Lots of lovely uh, emojis in there. And this um, is... Sarah, 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 can I stop you for a minute? Really oh. interesting question, actually, from somebody that's just said um, they've been advised not to use emojis as they're not inclusive. Um, that's very interesting. That's not a piece of advice we've received, received before. But if that is your policy, um, Sarah, do you want to ask, would it, would it mess your demo up completely to say, could you, could you, could you repeat all these posts? But please do do not include any emojis. So so you absolutely can can do that, and you can say, well, actually, thank thank thanks for these posts, but I'd like them without emojis. So, as I said, this the AI is about helping you do your best worst work fastest. So if your view is um, and your 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 policy is not to use emojis, not a problem. You can just say, please don't include emojis. Um, I'm not going to give an opinion on that, but I'm going to look go and look that up for you. Um, to find out what we can find out about it. That's not something I've come across. Um, they do create massive engagement, but what you can see is happening, right? And it may not be appropriate for council, so that's a very fair, fair, fair comment. But what okay. you can see here is literally uh -huh. live streaming on a webinar with hundreds of people on it. We have got rewritten uh, Instagram posts um, without emojis. Um, and if you, for example, Sarah said, could you make them more professional, um, and don't be so, you know, could, could you make these, could you please could you make these more professional? Um, again, it will do that. Um, and I'm not going to go into translation because I'm sure Sarah will in a moment. But yeah, um, that, yeah don't, don't, it, it will, it, it can do, it can do it whichever way you like. Hope that's answered your, answered your question. Um, sorry, I missed that earlier on. So please let me know if you've got any more questions on that. Add info. So, so Sarah's asking the AI right now to say, please, you make these posts more professional and in, add interest, add, add info on net zero. So, as you see, it's 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 about being the best version of yourself. It's not one size fits all. It's all about being able to create content faster, based upon. Um, uh, in this example, we used a, a certain day, but the AI will help you get to where you want to quicker. Hope that answers your question. Um, sorry, Sarah, sorry, sorry to interrupt your demo. Keep going. There you go. Look, there you go. Um, please can you make these more professional and add info on net zero. And there you go. By decided, to add, decided, to add the, decided to add the emojis in again. So you can it has, so that's fine. We can tell it off. Yeah, well, you could just say do it again without the emojis and it will spit it out. So it is the most, it's it's what I love about it is it just keeps delivering and never get across with you. So sorry, Sarah. I appreciate time's clicking on, so so prec on. Uh, no problem. So um so that was kind of one example. But what about this is creating content and this is you know we all struggle with how to create content and we have to try, you know share create content for very boring things sometimes um and local authorities especially um but what about when people engage in your content how do you respond do you engage in the conversation and if you do how do you do that so i'm going to show you uh, again a couple of things that from earlier I'm just going to go back to the dashboard. I shall open up my little bot. So I've come in to mentions because if somebody's talking about the council, you know, it's a, it's a thing to like a, a, some content. It takes a bit more effort to comment, but if somebody's actually taken the time to mention the council in their content, then actually um, it's really important to go and engage with it, whether it's pos positive or negative. So um, I've come into here, come into mentions, um, and there's some wonderful content here. And I found this FSB content here earlier. So I'm just going to, where's my other conversations? Okay. Oh, this was another one. This was a, a cow shed comment. Where was that? 
not sure. Anyway, um, I thought it, it, there was somebody attended a, a cowshed meeting, um, and uh, it's a pr about a project that they the council are, are running, and they wanted to know whether um, they'll be wanting any feedback to it, and so on and so forth. So I've literally just said to AI, write a response to this comment. Uh, attended the meeting tonight. Blah 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 blah. And here's your response. Thank you for attending the meeting tonight. We appreciate your interest in providing feedback, cowshed products, and so on. So it's just delivered it. Your voice matters. Community engagement. I love that. Really good use of hashtags. Um, let's just show for the for the sake of this one. I'm just going to now next week or the week after. This is actually going to go. Actually, that's in Welsh as well, isn't it? Um, this is going to be automated, isn't it, when you come in here? So you can come into any of these comments and you can see a suggested response, which you can either use or edit or not use. But for, for purposes of here, we're just going to copy, respond to this. Actually, it doesn't mind. Um, and I keep getting, I've been for ages, I've been telling, saying, please, can you? Uh, apparently, you don't need to be polite to it. It will do it anyway for you, which is rather nice. There you go. Look at that. Bookings for, and that's just, I've just done that now. Uh, attention, all sports enthusiasts, just a friendly reminder that bookings for the third week of our sports scheme, yada, yada, yada. Uh, sports scheme book now, active summer. Uh, you can Nothing. add messages and so on to this. I think Sarah, the point that's really worth making here is that the, the for whoever is for whoever who is tasked with with responding to your social media, both both from the comments, DMs, and for mentions, it's a really it's a massive task. They're going to have a huge range of knowledge, um, and what we're discovering is that AI will it will learn from your content and respond for you incredibly accurately. We very very rarely find a mistake. When I'm talking, Sarah, do you want to ask it to translate that to Welsh for us? Um, and particularly with local authorities that have got to um, deliver multilingual responses, um, it will enable you to, to, to translate um, either way. So if a comment comes in a language that you don't have somebody that can deal with, um, it will translate it back to English and let you then switch it back out in the right language. Um, it, it's incredible. Um, and we are committed to helping local authorities use AI to um, really manage their social media even better. So if anybody has any questions on that, please do let us know. Um, and by all means, um, as we said earlier on, do jump in and um, you have the right to a free platform by virtue of our partnership with Hashtag Task Force. So please, please do, do do that. We'll give you your details in a minute um, of how to get hold of Sarah. Sarah, is that it with a love demo? I'm just conscious that we're crunching through time quite quickly. Oh, crikey. Yes. Well, yes, I think that'll do for now. But it, where we've done this as a mention, it's where people comment on your posts. And obviously with local authorities, there's often really negative responses. And it just does a marvellous way of, of responding to that. So I'm just going to show you very quickly one last example and then we'll move away from the demo. And I think the point, the point with the comments piece is also it can be very demoralising for whoever is managing um, your content. Um, that they've got to constantly keeping night. The, 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 you know, it's, it's a very big job to keep responding to a variety of negative posts. Um, and by having a tool like this, it makes it really easy for them. Sarah, over to you. Yeah. So the, there's somebody who's basically comment on a post saying, yet another crash, uh, it's less than two months, possibly five cars. You know, at the county council and police are too busy munching on biscuits and tea, and there's 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 a few expletives and and so on that goes through on this great big rant, uh, and I've just said, please, can you respond to it? And it's just given such a nice, eloquent response. We're sorry to hear about the recent crash. At crash, um, safety on the road is of the utmost importance, um, and we encourage. You know, they talk about a, a speeding camera that doesn't work. You know, just report any issues to the local to the appropriate authorities so they can address the situation and let's work together to create safer streets for everyone in the community so you know when you're faced with those that content that you really feel like could end up being a really big negative conversation the platform is very very quick very clever at helping you mitigate any potential negative conversation 
even when people ask you why you pay your council tax, it's got some fantastic responses. Um, and we're yet to see anybody argue with it on that front. Um, so I'll stop my demo, go back to uh, the deck and we'll we'll round up. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I just one thing I'd like to make point out is that none of this is automated as yet. Um, what, our vision with this is that the AI, it, it will become even more tightly bound with the mobile platform. Um, you have access to it through, as I said, through our relationship with the Task Force. But most importantly, that it never does it automatically. What it's doing is drafting content for you, drafting responses for you um, and making it much easier for your team to do an even better job. Um, I'm very happy to show anybody much more. Um, um, so without, I think we're going to run on now into the other ways that we can support councils, which is that we provide, um, not only do you have um, access to, to the baby platform, and we're very happy to onboard you and show you how you can use that AI. Um, we, um, the, and the platform gives you access to a wide range of reports, so you can report on every business metric you need to. Um, and keep an eye on what's working well. Um, so, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind just sharing the screen now, then I'll okay, carry on. Um, uh, oh, it says I am. Am I not sure? Just, just hit slideshow, that's all. Slideshow. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, so, you access to all the reports you need um, um, uh, internally, but um, and you can see sentiment. All of these graphs click through to the act, act, active, act, actual post. So, if you want to look at who's your influencer or what was that negative post, it will click through and show you in a moment. Um, and you can let your entire team see it. So it's a really good way to, to, to gauge how you're getting them. As I said at the beginning, we've created a group of all the local authorities in the UK. Um, you can have access to this. Um, it's a great way to benchmark how you're performing and improve what you're doing. Um, and being at the top of the list, um, it might, doesn't mean that Sunderland, the Sunderland done a great job this week, but who's at the top next week? Really interesting conversation. Um, so yeah, fill your boots, please do get in touch. Um, we know that getting social media is, is right is hard. We make it easy. Um, we are absolutely passionate about giving people tools they need to get more, more from social media. And we have a whole range of um, help centres. We have 50 plus, I beg your pardon, we have 500 plus videos. Um, our, our support works 24 seven. You can ask how to create a reel, how to create a lead audience, or just where do I get started on Twitter? Um, and to that end, we work with local authorities um, not only for you to have access, you want access, email sarah at mabetech.com. We also work significantly with local authorities around delivering local business support. I am passionate about helping businesses use social media to drive local and social value. Um, last year, we delivered somewhere in the region of 750,000 phone calls. We provided over 20 million in match funding. We sent over 2 million emails and we delivered a 750k in vouchers. Um, we are beginning to roll that out with um, SPF funded um, local support projects as well. And if anybody wants to talk to us about that, please do let us know. Um, I believe the future of, of, of our world is a blended in physical and digital experience. Um, and in order to do that, you need to be able to reach all businesses in an area. You need to be able to train the businesses in the area and you need to give the businesses in the area the tools they need to get better at this stuff because the consumer has moved to a digital channel but that doesn't mean they don't want a physical experience but we've proven time and time again that if you improve the digital output of businesses in an area you increase the physical outcome um, the graph at the bottom in the middle with the orange and the blue and the gray lines is the difference in footfall the orange line is the footfall to businesses that are active on social media and we were training compared to businesses that are not um, we don't expect you to fund this, we match fund it massively, but anybody that wants to work with us on helping increase the digital output of their local authorities, please do let us know. We're good at it. If you, if you want to do it yourself, that's absolutely fine. We'll help you, we'll point you in the right direction of that as well. But we are totally committed to delivering social value with everything we do. And it worked out at around um, £912 per business. Conscious of your time, Thank you so much for joining us today. We've covered a lot. Um, digital activity contributes to Pride in Place and economic growth. These people turned up here because they saw something. They turned up here because they wanted something. Um, and um, make sure your place have a, has, has, a voice, has a voice. I've got some lovely um, questions just coming up. Did you say you could edit the AI response to amend a section if required? Please. Yes, absolutely, Karen. 
Well, the AI we draw, we see the AI as a, a draft. So it's like having a, an ever attentive assistant. It never answers back. You can tell it to do things again and again and again, and everything it creates, you can edit. So it's it's a shadow that helps you do your best work. It doesn't do anything um, without you actually hitting send. It just creates the content for you to edit. You can, what we didn't show you today is you've literally got a button you can translate it with. You can say, make it funnier, make it personal, make it more professional, all at the click of a button. Um, hope that's answered that question. Got another one here. Uh, such great helpful information. Thank you, maybe. Thank you, Marion. That's really lovely feedback. Um, and Samantha says, really interesting, useful. Thank you. Another question here um, around, um, yes, does it do it for you automatically? No. So, so it does it for you in the AI does it in seconds. Oh, that all sounds rather odd, doesn't it? So it will answer content for you in seconds, um, but it doesn't send it. it. It puts it there for you to look at it and goes, that correct? Can I edit it? And absolutely, you can edit it. Um, or you can ask the AI to edit it. So it is, it's a tool to help you do your work better. Um, really happy to show you all. Always another question. Um, another one, thanks for having our great content. Um, 10 out of 10, Sarah, I think you've done an amazing piece of research. Thank you all for coming. Same time, same place next week we'll be here. Um, and Sarah at maybetech.com, if you'd like to be able to use this or just go to maybetech.com and sign up and we will meet up with you. But remember, you've all got the ability to use this. Um, thank you all for being such a great, crowd oh gosh we've got more and more comments coming in we'll answer these offline thank you all so much sarah great job over and out we asked for now you've got now thank you very much indeed see you so much yes yeah, see you next see you next time next, 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 next yes month. first wednesday of september oh, that sounds frightening doesn't it have, have a good summer take care